So in the future, sculpting inside a Blender is not going to be like anything you've ever seen. All right, we're on Blender's website, but I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the Blender roadmap here. So I've already talked about how in Blender 3.0, there really isn't going to be, uh, at least, you know, in December when it launches, any updates inside of Blender Sculpting, as far as I can tell. This little blurb here says there's a proposal, and this proposal, we click this link, this is what we're going to talk about today. This proposal was done by Pablo. He actually left the Blender Foundation, Corporation, whatever. I don't think they've replaced anybody to do any of this sculpting stuff, but this was his plan, and it's still in the approval process, but he has nothing to do with it anymore. So lots of good information here. What we're going to do is do a Command F for Sculpt, and take a look. So development and new technical innovations regarding the asset creation workflow will focus on having the most advanced real-time interaction possible instead of handling large amounts of data. That's interesting as a sculptor. Maybe in the future, it'd be really, really cool to sculpt in a, like a real-time rendering engine if it was super, super flawless. Maybe I would love it. At this point, I, I don't need that. I don't care. Like I can do with just like normal viewport as long as it's optimized. But that's interesting because they say we'll focus on having the most advanced real time interaction possible instead of handling large amounts of data. To me, large amounts of data means uh, high polygon counts. This means the performance will still improve, but the features and code design won't be targeting handling the highest possible poly count. Focus on performance won't be on how high the vertex count in sculpt mode can be, but how fast Blender can deform a mesh, evaluating a geometry node network on top of it and render it with EBR shading and lighting. That's interesting. So clay brush is working in EV, which is the real time rendering. Let's go ahead and mute this and take a look. Right, that looks really, really nice. It looks pretty darn smooth. Yeah, everything looks smooth. Rendering inside of uh, EV, real time. Pretty great. How many polys you got? You got half a million. Okay. That's pretty cool. This is a performance prototype. Supporting sculpting tools while using a fully featured render engine is one of Blender's strengths. Improving that workflow is one of the one of the goals of this project. So what I'm gathering from this is Blender wants the ability to sculpt using the real-time engine and make it as optimized as possible. Uh, the most advanced deformation tools to control the shapes of the base meshes, which can be used in combination with procedural shaders, geometry nodes, blah, blah, blah. Current tools like pose, boundary, cloth brush are poorly implemented in master due to handling the legacy sculpt data types. Addressing these limitations will make them work as they should. Okay, interesting. We also know that handling large amounts of data is important for some studio pipelines. That's an understatement. That... <laughs> I would say most studio pipelines, like for those people using ZBrush, that's the whole point, right? You're, that's the workflow. You have high poly to low poly. That is definitely an understatement. So for those tasks, the plan is to handle the data from a separate editor that does not interfere with the rest of Blender interactive workflow. When it comes to meshes, this can come as a separate editor with its own viewport, optimized only for rendering as many polygons as possible and non real-time mesh processing operations. That's good. I'm glad they're taking that into the into account because it kind of seemed like they were just not trying to do anything with high poly counts. This will keep the high poly mesh data isolated from the rest of the scene, making the tools, real-time viewports, and the rest of the features perform as they should. Having this kind of data into its own container will also help features like streaming directly to render engines without affecting performance of the scene. It's so interesting. I'm glad they have this caveat, but since it is, it appears to be a caveat. I think that, I think this is a good thing for Blender. It's good to be thinking outside the box. That's one of the biggest beefs that I have with Blender is the fact that it does not handle high polygon count well at all. It just wasn't designed to do that. Blender, it's not in its blood. You know what I mean? So ZBrush, it is. The way it's designed, all the magic that happens in ZBrush, it is designed for those high polygon counts. What I don't necessarily love about this is, yes, it'd be cool to sculpt in real time, but the performance right now in sculpting, is it sucks in comparison to ZBrush. Like, they've made huge improvements. So hopefully all their tricks under the hood would make this even better, but I just don't understand why Blender would be focusing on this. I feel like, as a sculptor, I wish Blender would just focus on getting what they have working well. And maybe maybe they've come to a roadblock. Maybe they've realized Blender's not capable of that. So they're shifting gears to make it happen. If that's the case, that's really, really wise. Because trying to force uh, Blender to work in sculpt mode with these high polygon counts, if it simply can't, and just being sta stagnant is a bad thing. Switching to this real-time stuff and trying to do these tricks to make sculpting work better, that could be a good thing. Especially if Blender is not capable. I I don't know. I'm I'm just the the sculptor, not 
an engineer of any any stretch of the imagination. The most interesting thing in this entire focus on performance won't be on how high the vertex count in sculpt mode can be, but how fast Blender can perform mesh. Using geometry nodes, my guess is displacement maps, because this was talking about a novel approach combine the traditional triangle offset sculpting shader based texture displacement so possibly instead of adding more polygon count when you're sculpting like clay buildup maybe instead of actually displaying that it's a texture that's uh that's pushing that information along to our eyes and it's not actually increasing the poly count that could be uh, maybe it's just trying to not trick the viewer but like it doesn't really matter if my eyes see the displacement or if it sees actual geometry being pulled pretty darn vague but it'll be interesting to see where where all of this goes